All right, our first non-quarterback to go here, Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously his father, played in the NFL. Now he goes at pick four to the Arizona Cardinals, which is a really interesting situation. So I really like Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, that might be a, more of a bad thing than a good thing if you're a Cardinals fan to hear, because I my track record with trying to evaluate wide receivers has been horrible. I've missed basically every year on my wide receiver ones. So hopefully, uh, you know, Harrison Jr. is good enough to break that curse a little bit. And I think he is. I think he's very good. And for the Cardinals, you know, they kind of needed this, right? They're in a, I think they're in a full rebuild. I like Kyler Murray. I think he's kind of an underrated player. He does a lot of really good stuff. Uh, and I thought, you know, it took him maybe, he maybe had his, a couple down games coming back from the injury, but really showed why he is a, you know, why he's a quarterback who got that big contract in the first place, why he was an MVP favorite just a couple of years ago. Uh, I do think though, that a couple things for one thing they just need a star player or two they need to start adding stars Trey McBride's really good I actually really like James Conner a lot too he had a really good year but they could kind of use you know who's their next like who's their next star like McBride you could call him a star if you want to he, I think an emerging star um but who's the next player who you're like that's an elite guy Again, I'm sure Cardinals fans will point to a guy or two, but for me, I think that, you know, Connor and McBride are the only two you're really considering outside of the quarterback position. So just going out and getting another star player, trying to build a core to this team that can hopefully be there for the next 10 to 15 years. That's what they need to do. Obviously, Connor won't be there because he's a running back, but, you know, the, you know, the McBride, uh, Harrison Jr., that's kind of what you want to do right here. And I, I think I could see it happening. I, I think that they, he is someone who could be really good. The other side of the coin is that they just need some receiver help. They, they do. Like, listen, looking at their, uh, you know, their receiving room right now, like Michael Wilson, uh, Greg Dorch, even like Chris Moore, like those are not bad players. Uh, you know, I, I like uh, some, of, some of what Mike, Michael Wilson did. I, I do. But they're not number one receivers. They're just not. At least they haven't shown that at this point in their career. So if you're going out and getting someone who could be that number one receiver, it, it does so much for your team. And I don't think it's an entire coincidence that the one year we saw Kyler Murray play his best football was the year where they had Hopkins for most of that year. And I think don't think it's a coincidence that when Kyler Murray kind of, you know, you could argue his play dipped a little bit towards the end of the year, they didn't have Hopkins. So like, I don't think that's entirely coincidental. I'm not saying that Hopkins made Kyler. I'm just saying kind of the obvious, which is you need a good uh, wide receiver to succeed as a quarterback. doesn't matter how good you are at throwing the football if no one's open. So hopefully Harrison Jr. could be that guy. Now, talked a lot about the Cardinals. Maybe I should start talking about the player itself, Marvin Harrison Jr., who is a, so here's the thing with Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, I, you know, I can talk about how great he is. I've made a film study on him in the past already. So just search Jackson Cougar Sports, Marvin Harrison uh, Jr. It'll come up. Uh, you know, I made a film study on him. And one of the things I talked about there, which I believe in, is like kind of the worst thing going for him is just how high expectations are of him. People are saying, okay, so is he going to be like, I, I saw uh, it was, you know, I'll give a shout out to Marcus Whitman, uh, that franchise guy. He's, you know, does a lot of great stuff. I'm sure he's live right now doing his draft analysis. Uh, so, you know, check out his channel if you haven't. But you know, I, I believe he compared uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. to A.J. Green, and people were like, how could you compare him uh, to, you know, he's going to be way better than A.J. Green. If he's A.J. Green, that's an amazing use of pick number four, right? It's just that there's so high expectations for a player who hasn't even taken a snap yet, but at the same time, like, he could be better than A.J. Green. It's, it's not out of the question. Uh, but, you know, if you get A.J. Green, pick four, you're very happy about it. Uh, I think that he's he could be a really good player for the Arizona Cardinals. And even if he doesn't fully hit the ceiling, you know, again, if he's D.J. Moore instead, like, that's still a really key piece that can help the Cardinals grow and try to get better and try to, you know, complete this rebuild that I think that might take a year or two. So just getting kind of the best player you know, outside of a quarterback in this draft class, I think it makes a lot of sense. I really do. Now, uh, I mean, I guess the other question thing we can talk about is would a trade down have made sense? Well, again, 
people always love to talk about trade downs. There's a few things. For one, you have to have a trade partner. You can't just trade down. It's not a video game where every team will say yes to a trade down. You need a team to be willing to move up to number four to get a player, which maybe there would have been. I'm sure someone would have for the right price, right? But you got to make sure you're getting the value back. So that's part of it. And the other part of it is, well, if you're trading down, you're now not getting Marvin Harrison Jr., who's supposed to be the elite-level wide receiver, supposed to be potentially the best wide receiver uh, we've seen in, you know, maybe ever uh, coming out of the draft, in, at least in recent years, I should say. Ever would be a little bit uh, aggressive. But, you know, one of, the be- one of the best wide receiver prospects we've seen. But even so, if you're trading down a few spots, you might be also missing out on Malik Neighbors or Rome Odunze. And I just did all this talk about how they need that star player and they need a wide receiver and, and you're picking here where there happens to be a great wide receiver, like, I, listen, I, I get it. Uh, usually a trade down makes sense. And you could say, well, look at all the holes they need. Well, you can you can fill those holes later. Uh, if you have a, f- a core of guys, that's how you can succeed. You need those star players. You just do. No team has ever won a Super Bowl without stars. Like, I guess the closest you could say is some of those Patriots years, but they had Tom Brady. It's a little different. Uh, And even they had stars. They had Gronkowski. You know, they had uh, some guys defensively back in the day. Like, no, I I wouldn't even say that. You need some stars. You need some superstars. And he has the potential to do that. I I guess the one, you know, could you have maybe traded back a few spots, gotten a Rome Odunze, uh, or even like a Brock Bowers? Well, you wouldn't want Brock Bowers because, uh, sure, tight, two tight end sets and all that, but uh, you'd rather a receiver. Uh, if Could you have traded back, gotten Rome Odunze, and gotten some extra trade value? Maybe. And if that happened, maybe I wouldn't have crushed it. But again, we don't know the draft capital. And at the end of the day, sometimes just get the best player. Like sometimes we overthink this stuff. Sometimes like, hey, this player is really good at football. Let's get the guy who's really good at football, who is a position of need. And uh, it could be awesome for us. Let's just do that. And you know, one other small thing that I think that people always overlook is ownership wants to sell tickets. And I know that that's not something that is ever fun. And people feel like, oh, the team should never think about that. They should only focus on winning. No, uh, teams do think about that. Uh, Adding a star receiver does help you sell tickets, but it's kind of the perfect marriage of basically everything that the Cardinals would have wanted happened to them. They got a great receiver at number four. So like, you know, uh, to me, uh, I I guess the other kind of criticism, the only other thing I could think of is some people like Malik Neighbors a little better than Harrison Jr., which I understand. I do think Neighbors has maybe some, a a bit of more of a, flash to him. I think Neighbors is great. I did like Harrison Jr. a little bit better, though. So, no. Uh, to me, this is this is the right move. Well done by Arizona. Get excited if you're a Cardinals fan. That's what I think. Him and Kyler together should be a lot of fun. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.